Hello everybody, welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy. My name is Mike Thompson and this video is part of the Private Pilot Ground School. Now remember, these videos parallel the online ground school content. That's two parts of our three-part equation. Part number three is please be sure to review this content with your flight instructors. What are we talking about today? We're talking about NOTAMs. Now, maybe you've heard this term already before. NOTAMs is an abbreviation for Notices to Airmen. Well, why are these notices out there? What's this all about? The FAA is trying to communicate information to us pilots that may have some effect on our flight. Remember, if you haven't reviewed this yet, you will in the near future, Prior to conducting your flight, as a pilot, we are required to make ourselves available with information concerning that flight. This is a regulation called 91.103, frequently referred to as pre-flight action. So as part of pre-flight action, we want to be sure that we're familiar with all of the notices to airmen or NOTAMs that are affecting our flight. Now, notice I said notice to airmen. You may hear the term lately, uh, we've changed it from men to missions. So it is now known as notices to air missions. Now, early on in aviation, the FAA had no real way to communicate that to pilots. Well, back in the 1930s and 40s, they were taking their cue from a system called Notice to Mariners. The government would put out notices to ship captains to warn ship captains of conditions that may affect the conduct of their shipping voyage. Well, the FAA adopted a very similar policy in the 1940s and started producing NOTAMs. Over the years and decades, there have been a lot of different formats and types of NOTAMs, and sometimes it gets a little confusing for pilots to look at it and make sense of it. So, to make sense of NOTAMs, what we are going to refer to is the Aeronautical Information Manual, Chapter 5, Section 1, Paragraph 3, or AIM 5.1.3. Now, in 5.1.3, we see that there are four classifications of NOTAMs. The first one to talk about is the NOTAM D. Now, Early on, we used to say the D stood for distant notification. A better way to think about that word is dissemination, or NOTAM for wide dissemination. Disseminated NOTAM Ds are sent to all parts of the national airspace system. The, uh, these NOTAM Ds um, deal with information such as um, things that are affecting the aerodrome. Now, the FAA uses the term aerodrome. It means airport. Well, what might affect that? Are runways being worked on, closed, repaired, repainted? Uh, taxiways may be being closed or rerouted or repaired. Uh, construction at the airport, maybe there are some specific airspace restrictions or temporary changes. And those are the types of items we'll find in the NOTAM D. The second classification pilots call the FDC NOTAM. The FDC stands for Flight Data Center. Now we refer to FDC NOTAMs as being regulatory in nature. Oh, what do we mean regulatory in nature? How exactly might they be regulatory? Later on when you start your instrument rating and start flying in the instrument system, you're going to become familiar with what we call IAPs or Instrument Approach 
procedures, an FDC NOTAM might make an amendment or a change to an instrument approach procedure. That makes it regulatory. Uh, we might see FDC NOTAMs dealing with temporary flight restrictions or TFRs. Uh, they may deal with things like WAS services, etc. The third classification of NOTAMs is called international. If this NOTAM is going to be affecting more than one country, an international NOTAM is put out using the ICAO format. Now, later on, when we look at how this international NOTAM is numbered, we're going to see the capital letter A. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. The fourth type of NOTAM that AIM Chapter 5 calls out is the military NOTAM. And as the name suggests, these are for military operations and military bases, and the military NOTAMs use that international format. Well, pilots might want to be sure to review some of those military NOTAMs if we're flying to a location where there is joint use. Well, let me give you an example. Here in Florida, in Northeast Florida, we have a lot of naval presence up around Jacksonville. There are many airports up and around Jacksonville where both naval aviation and civilian aviation take place concurrently. Those are the types of locations that we're referring to when we say joint military civil action. And that's why I might want to be familiar with my military NOTAMs. Now, let's talk for a second about how NOTAMs are numbered. This is often a source of confusion. And I want you to take a look at the graphic on the screen here where it talks about the basic building blocks. Our first basic building block in most NOTAMs is an exclamation point. Now, that's really nothing for us to worry about. That is just a symbol used for data processing. The next building block right after that exclamation point is the accountable location. After the accountable location comes the NOTAM number. After that is they will start to talk about the affected area or the affected uh, process or item and then we're going to see key words. Following these key words what we're looking at are attributes that are affected and conditions that might be affected like something might be out of surface service and then finally uh, we see the start date and time of the NOTAM and the stop date and time of the NOTAM. Now, after looking at our NOTAM building blocks, let's take a look at a specific example. On the screen here is a specific example of PDX. Notice it starts with the exclamation point and is followed by the accountable location. That's PDX. Then we have the NOTAM number. Now, this number is the month followed by a NOTAM number. The first two numbers are the numbers for that month. So, for example, if it says 1-1, that's the 11th month, that's November, and then the NOTAM number. Now, when you look at our PDX example, right after that numbering system, you see a second numbering system. This second numbering system is the one that we use for the international numbering scheme. Remember earlier we talked about the capital letter A? Well, here it is. Notice that it starts with the capital letter A, then it's followed by a random number, and then after the slash is the two number for the year in which it was issued. So our PDX example here is a good one. Now, also, at PDX, let's take a look at our next example. This is an FDC NOTAM. Now, there's a few minor differences. 
Notice it still starts with the exclamation point, but immediately after that exclamation, it's not an accountable location. It is Foxtrot Delta Charlie, FDC. That's a uh, flight data center NOTAM. Now, after the FDC, then we will see the accountable location and the rest of the NOTAM information with some keywords that we'll talk about in a moment. In addition to these four classifications of NOTAMs, you may see other NOTAMs. Let's mention a couple of those. Outside of the the major, the four major classifications. You might see what we call a class one NOTAM, a class two NOTAM. Class one means that this NOTAM is being disseminated by telecommunication techniques. A class two NOTAM means this NOTAM is being disseminated by other than telecommunication techniques. You may also see uh, what's called a center NOTAM. When we say center, we mean air route traffic control center NOTAMs. Those are NOTAMs that affect multiple airports. Another type of NOTAM that you might see is commonly called a pointer NOTAM. Now, we have an example of a pointer NOTAM here. And in this example, again, it starts with an exclamation point and then an accountable location. And then notice it is literally telling us to see another NOTAM. In our example, it is pointing us to DDY and the NOTAM information at DDY. Now, as you start to become comfortable reading and interpreting these formats, you're going to start to notice that there are some common abbreviations used across NOTAMs. And in fact, if you read AIM 5-1-3, you're going to see that it tells us that for NOTAM Ds, they must have at least one or more of the NOTAM keywords. Well, what are some of these keywords? Let's take a look at this, these NOTAM examples. And for example, here you see COM, C-O-M. Um, you see uh, R-W-Y for runway. Um, you see O-B-S-T for obstructions. You can see some of those common examples here. Also, if we look specifically in AIM Chapter 5, Section 1, we're going to see tables that list some of the more commonly used NOTAM abbreviations. The first half of the table has keywords that are commonly used uh, across all NOTAMs and particularly VFR-related information. The second half of that table shows some abbreviations that might be less familiar to you right now but we'll be more familiar later because those are instrument flight rule or IFR related NOTAM abbreviations. Well, folks, I hope that we have cleared up what can sometimes be kind of a confusing area. Um, I hope that we've cleared up some of this information by using the AIM Chapter 5 and providing some structure as to the types of NOTAMs, how they're disseminated, and how they are interpreted. So we're going to close this session with a simple review question. In the AIM Chapter 5, what are the four classifications of NOTAMs? And if you answered NOTAM D, FDC, international and military, you got it. Well done. Good job. Well, folks, that wraps up NOTAMs. We'll talk to you next time.